Welcome back to Zacco and our five-part mini-course on HAIs. This video's topic will focus on central line-associated bloodstream infections. Central line-associated bloodstream infections, or CLAPSIs, are serious infections that occur in hospitals and healthcare settings. They happen when bacteria or fungi enter the bloodstream through a central line. Central lines are catheters placed into large veins, often in the neck, chest, or groin. These lines are essential for delivering medications, fluids, and nutrition, and for monitoring patients' vital signs. However, they also create a pathway for germs to enter the bloodstream. Clabsies are a serious and potentially life-threatening condition, which can often be prevented with the right measures in place. So, stick around as we discuss the causes, risks, and preventive measures for central line-associated bloodstream infections. This is a central line, Central lines provide a direct route into the bloodstream, bypassing the body's natural defenses. This direct access is crucial for patients who need long-term medication, nutrition, or fluids. It differs from regular cannulas and peripheral access because the central line is a thick catheter that accesses the central large veins in the human body. Hence, central lines are often placed in the internal jugular vein, subclavian vein, or femoral vein. The central line has a catheter and three lines for different IV fluids. These lines are covered with a catheter hub. The direct access to a patient's bloodstream is beneficial in delivering the necessary medications and fluids. However, it also makes it easier for bacteria or fungi to enter and multiply, leading to clabsies. There are three main ways that clabsies can develop. First, contamination during insertion. If sterile techniques are not strictly followed during the insertion procedure, bacteria can be introduced into the bloodstream. This can happen if the skin is not properly cleaned, if sterile equipment is not used, or if the healthcare provider's hands are not properly sanitized. Even a small lapse in hygiene can have significant consequences. Second, contamination of the catheter hub. The catheter hub is the point where the central line connects to other tubing and devices. This critical junction must be kept clean at all times. This area can become contaminated if it is not cleaned properly or if it becomes wet or loose. Regular checks and maintenance are essential to prevent this type of contamination. Third, the migration of bacteria from the skin to the site of the central line can also cause clabsies. Bacteria that live on the skin can migrate along the surface of the catheter and enter the bloodstream. This is a common route for infection and is more likely to happen if the dressing around the catheter becomes loose or wet. Ensuring the dressing is secure and dry is a simple yet effective way to reduce the risk of clabsies. Now that we've summarized how clabsies develop, let's learn how to prevent them. The application of a clabsy care bundle is essential in reducing and even eliminating the risk of clabsy. The clabsy care bundle includes proper hand hygiene, aseptic techniques, site selection, daily review of necessity, dressing changes, and disinfection of catheter hubs. Hand hygiene. One of the most effective ways to prevent is through proper hand hygiene. This simple practice can make a significant difference in patient outcomes. Healthcare providers should wash their hands thoroughly with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before and after touching a central line. This ensures that any potential contaminants are removed. Washing your hands before touching a central line removes any germs that may be on your hands. This step is crucial in maintaining a sterile environment and protecting the patient from infections. Gloves are not a substitute for hand hygiene. They are an additional layer of protection. Washing your hands after touching a central line removes any germs that may have been transferred from the line to your hands. Aseptic techniques. Aseptic techniques, or sterile techniques, are a set of procedures used to prevent the introduction of microorganisms into a sterile field. This is a fundamental practice in healthcare settings to ensure patient safety and prevent infections. This is particularly important when handling central lines as any contamination can have serious consequences. When a central line is being inserted, it is crucial to maintain a sterile field. This involves creating a controlled environment where the risk of contamination is minimized, 
by using sterile gloves, gowns, and drapes. These act as barriers to prevent the transfer of microorganisms and ensuring that all equipment and supplies are sterile. Sterile packaging and proper handling are essential to maintain the sterility of these items. The area where the line is being inserted should also be thoroughly cleaned with an antiseptic solution. This step is vital to eliminate any potential pathogens on the skin. The dressing that covers the central line insertion site should be changed regularly, typically every seven days, to maintain a sterile environment and prevent infection. Adhering to these guidelines ensures consistency and safety in patient care. During dressing changes, it is important to use sterile technique to prevent contamination. This includes meticulous hand hygiene and the use of sterile supplies. This includes wearing sterile gloves, which are essential to protect both the patient and the healthcare provider, and using sterile dressings and solutions. These materials are spe specifically designed to maintain sterility and support healing. Skin antisepsis and selection. The skin is a natural reservoir for bacteria, so proper skin antisepsis before central line insertion is crucial. Chlorhexidine gluconate is the preferred antiseptic agent because it provides long-lasting antimicrobial activity. Chlorhexidine has been shown to be more effective than povidone iodine in reducing the risk of clabsy. This is because chlorhexidine has a broader spectrum of activity against bacteria and fungi, and it binds to the skin, providing a longer duration of action. The choice of where to insert the central line also plays a role in clabsy risk. The subclavian vein, located below the clavicle, is generally preferred because it is associated with lower infection rates compared to other sites like the femoral vein in the groin. Daily Review Once a central line is in place, it's essential to assess its necessity daily. Every day, the healthcare team should evaluate if the patient still requires the central line. If the line is no longer medically necessary, it should be removed promptly to minimize infection risk. The longer a central line remains in place, the higher the risk of infection. Proper securement of the central line is crucial to prevent accidental dislodgement or movement, which can increase infection risk. Securement devices, such as sutures or adhesive dressings, help keep the catheter in place, reducing the likelihood of bacteria entering the bloodstream. Treatment. If a patient develops a clabsy, prompt treatment is essential to prevent serious complications. Keep in mind, clabsies are not just minor infections. They can have serious and even life-threatening consequences for patients. Some of the potential complications of clabsy include sepsis, endocarditis, and osteomyelitis, just to name a few. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's response to infection damages its own tissues and organs. Clabsy is a common cause of sepsis, and sepsis is a leading cause of death in hospitalized patients. Endocarditis is an infection of the inner lining of the heart, which can damage the heart valves. Osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone, which can be very difficult to treat. And death, while rare, clabsies can be fatal, especially if they are not treated promptly and effectively. In addition to these serious health risks, clabsies also place a significant financial burden on the healthcare system. They lead to longer hospital stays, increased use of antibiotics, and the need for additional medical procedures. Treatment typically involves blood cultures to identify the specific type of bacteria or fungi causing the infection. This information is crucial for selecting the most effective antibiotic treatment. Based on the blood culture results, intravenous antibiotics are administered to target the infection. The choice of antibiotics will depend on the type of microorganism and its susceptibility to different drugs. In many cases, the infected central line needs to be removed to clear the infection completely. Clabsies are a serious but preventable healthcare complication. By implementing evidence-based prevention strategies, healthcare facilities can significantly reduce the incidence of these infections. It's crucial to remember that prevention is always better than treatment. And that concludes our discussion for today. This is part three of a five-part series on healthcare-associated infections. If you haven't watched the first two videos, click above to watch the first video in the series.
subscribe to our channel to watch our next video on the fourth type of healthcare-associated infection, ventilator-associated pneumonias. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave any suggestions, requests, or questions in the comments section or send us a message. To learn more about Zacco, visit our website, www.zacco-sa.com or email us at admin at zacco-sa.com. WhatsApp or call us at plus 96-565-405-419 to reach our experts for assistance in accreditation matters such as CBI, JCI, or GAHAR. Follow us on social media where we post tips, tricks, and motivation for you on a regular basis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified of our videos when we post them. Zacco, the power of expert consultations in the palm of your hands.